Hello, everybody. Thank you for your interest in this educational course about brain parcellation. So brain parcellation is a very wide field. Uh, we find the roots of this field basically in brain cartography. So the first um, cartographer, who are popular like Broadman, for example, look at the brain under the microscope and their main objective was to identify specific territories or areas that were separated, uh, relatively uh, separated in the brain. So their objective was to identify borders and then to report these borders into brain maps, such as, for example, the famous um, Broadman map. Um, their observation was mainly based on um, microstructural features, such as, for example, site architecture. And this work has continued in the following decades, but uh, this has been automated. So site architecture mapping, for example, is now um, done in an automated way by using computer for generating uh, site architecture maps. But one important um, area of progress was introduced by the advent of neuroimaging scanner. Because when neuroimaging scanner uh, appear or were developed, we could look not only at local uh, features of the brain, but also at connectivity feature. In particular, uh, one should uh, think that such architecture was derived on slices of the brain. But with neuroimaging scanner, we had 3D images relatively fast and relatively uh, easily in hundreds of participants. So this opened the perspective to um, derive connectivity features that could be used for brain parcellation. And uh, so this is an example of map that can be derived based on voxels properties, connectivity properties. But we can look with neuroimaging scanner not only at microstructural features, but at connectivity features, and there are a range of different local and connectivity features, so it means that we can derive a wide range of maps. And from these different maps, we can try to integrate them into a unique multimodal map. So this is what uh, Matthew Glaser is going to talk about in this educational course. But we can also compare the map to look at convergence and divergence. And this provides us a specific insight into principle of brain organization. And I will talk about that um, at the end of this uh, session. Because first of all, um, I would like to give you a conceptualization of brain parcellation along two main attributes or dimensions. So if you look at the literature on brain parcellation, this is very broad. There are really a wide range of approaches. And the way to classify the different approaches, one way is to distinguish the features that are used or the markers. And these can be separated into two different categories. So on the one hand, we have local features that probe really local properties of brain tissues. For example, so we have histology-based features such as site architecture, receptor, or myelin. But we have also MRI-based features such as myelin, which can also be estimated from MRI data, or meta-analytic activation uh, modeling approach. So the idea here is to look at the response, the functional response of uh, brain region or brain areas across a range of um, activation paradigms. And this is known as meta analytic activation modeling, which should not be confused with meta analytic connectivity modeling. Because meta analytic connectivity modeling uh, probes, as its name indicates, connectivity, so global features. In MRI-based global features, we have resting state functional connectivity, meta analytic connectivity modeling, as I said, but also diffusion tractography and uh, other approaches such as structural covariance. Now we can also distinguish parcellation approach based on the type of algorithm they use. 
So if you look at the first parcellation studies based on site architecture, you will see that they use a border detection approach or boundary mapping. So the idea is to identify when there is an abrupt change in the feature across the brain, which indicate the borders between different areas. So this is what we um, see in histology-based work, uh, as I say, but the other approach is a clustering or a factorization approach. So in this approach, we look globally at the data and we decompose into different cluster of factors that represent that are assumed to represent different networks or brain regions or brain areas. Um, an example of um, the application of boundary mapping to local features, so to histology-based feature, is the U-brain. Um, Svenja Kasper gonna talk more about that in this educational uh, course. But boundary mapping approach can also be applied to connectivity features. So for example, one of the first parcellation uh, study based on resting state functional connectivity use a boundary mapping approach. And uh, we have the same idea for clustering of factorization. It can be applied to local features, such as, for example, uh, metanetic activation modeling but it is more generally applied to uh, connectivity features. So for example, the famous uh, Yeo Atlas has been derived based on a clustering factorization approach applied to resting state functional connectivity. An example of uh, resting state functional connectivity parcellation using such decomposition approach will be provided by, or more information will be provided by uh, Ruby Kong in this educational course. But for now, I would like to focus a bit more on connectivity-based parcellation, because if you look at the literature on brain parcellation, this represents a very large portion of the literature. And the idea is relatively simple. So if you have connectivity features from neuroimaging data, whatever type of connectivity, if you are interested in a specific region in the brain, so for example, here the hippocampus, we look at the voxel within this region. And if we take two different voxels and we look across the brain um, into their connectivity profile, so their functional connectivity profile, we can see that these different voxels differ in their connectivity profile across the brain. Then if we do that for all voxels within the hippocampus, we can cluster them according to their connectivity profile. So for example, here we can distinguish anterior and posterior region of the hippocampus. Now there are a range of connectivity features that can be used for brain parcellation. The most popular is um, functional connectivity derived from resting state data. But functional connectivity can also be derived based on the meta-analytic approach, which give us co-activation information about the voxel across a range of activation studies. So this is typically done across thousands of activation studies that are stored in, uh, was result are stored in databases such as BrainMap and Neurosynth. So these are two um, connectivity features that probe functional connectivity, but we can also use structural connectivity based on uh, diffusion MRI. Let me put this here. Um, so one famous approach, for example, is probabilistic uh, diffusion tractography, which has been used in many studies for uh, understanding brain organization based on a parcellation approach, more specifically, generally a clustering approach. But we also have um, more hybrid, I would say, uh, connectivity feature, such as structural covariance, which probe coplasticity between brain region. So the idea is that uh, region that tend to be functionally coped or that share some um, structural properties will show covariation in their morphology across population sample. And this technique is known as structural covariance. 
So now, if we go more into uh, slightly more into technical detail, how would connectivity-based parcellation work if we have a region such as the dorsal premotor cortex that I pick up here? We first have to derive the connectivity uh, profile of all voxel within this region that are typically called seed voxel. So we derive their connectivity profile with all of the voxel in the gray matters, and we store this information in a connectivity matrix. Then for each pair of seed voxel, we can examine their similarity or their distance. And this is the information that the clustering or the factorization approach will use for um, identify groups of voxels. And this is illustrated here. So if we reorder it, um, the, the voxel based on their similarity of distance and um, then apply a clustering approach, you see how we can distinguish different cluster. And if we map those cluster of seed voxel within the brain, you see how it looks like. We have a differentiation along the rostracodal axis and the ventrodorsal axis within these dorsal premotor cortex. Now, um, we can use, as I say, many different connectivity features. And for example, here, this is when we use um, tractography based on diffusion data. Um, we have this uh, pattern of organization, but if we use resting state functional connectivity, we have a relatively similar pattern. And we also have a similar pattern using metanetic connectivity modeling. So, we could say that different connectivity features uh, will converge toward the same um, pattern of organization within this region. However, um, if you look at the um, parcellation studies in the literature, you will see that um, they or emphasize, they try to emphasize most of the time the convergence between um, the derived map, especially when it's based on connectivity features, and the map derived from local microstructure, looking for uh, convergence to validate somehow uh, the result of the study of the parcellation study. However, there are also a lot of diversions. And actually, these diversions. Uh, reflect the fact that local microstructure versus uh, connectivity features reflects different principle of organization of the brain. So we should not a priori um, look for a perfect convergence between the two because they probe different, the different approach probe different aspect of brain organization. And I will illustrate this point here with the hippocampus. So if we um, Pars, uh, parcelate the hippocampus based on metanetic connectivity modeling, we see really an anterior-posterior differentiation. And if we use resting state functional connectivity, which also probe uh, functional connectivity, but at rest, we also have this anterior-posterior differentiation. And in particular, at the tree cluster, we have this head, body, and tail differentiation, which is really well known in the human hippocampus. But this is really different from the map that we have based on site architecture mapping. So typically the um, site architecture map of the hippocampus distinguish different uh, subfields that are arranged along the medial lateral and the ventrodorsal axis. So um, here, this is really an illustration of how the local microstructure organization is different will provide a different type of organization than the large scale um, functional integration, which is probed with connectivity features. And now if we take another approach, um, such as structural covariance, which I say before, on the one hand probe functional integration, but is also assumed to be influenced between uh, similarity in local microstructure profile of the region, what we see is first a differentiation along the anterior posterior axis. But if we go to three cluster, we see this medial lateral differentiation as well, which is different from what we see 
uh, with connectivity approach uh, so that are purely based on functional connectivity. So, and this media lateral differentiation actually resemble very much to the media lateral differentiation that we see based on site architecture. So here, this is the differentiation between the subiculum and uh, the CA field. And if now we look at uh, the many different parcellation and also the gradient studies that have been performed in the hippocampus, we can really see this uh, principle in which uh, approach that probe local microstructure first or uh, mainly show a differentiation along the media lateral uh, axis and approach that probe large scale functional integration such as resting state functional connectivity mainly show this anterior posterior differentiation but ultimately both approach will show um, the two organizational uh, dimension within the hippocampus. So if we, um, for example, look at um, structural covariance, we have uh, these, as I say, anterior posterior differentiation, but we also have this media lateral differentiation. But now if we look at approach that probes specifically a local microstructure, we mainly have this uh, media lateral differentiation within the hippocampus. And if we look at gradient approach, we first see this, uh, so this is really visible with gradient approach, we have this first dimension in functional connectivity, which is anterior posterior. And then the second dimension is medial, is more arranged along the medial lateral axis. So this explains how we can have many different maps for a given brain region based on the different um, approach or features that we use. Now, if I still have um, a bit of time, I would like to uh, let you know about this tool if you want to perform connectivity-based parcellation yourself. So this is uh, a tool which is completely in open access that we have implemented uh, in Python. And uh, this work with different connectivity modality, you can choose between different uh, pre-processing for the region, the, the mask that you use, so the seed box and mask. So it works only for regional connectivity-based parcellation, not for world brain parcellation. Um, you can, you, you can uh, choose between different uh, connectivity uh, pre-processing I mean, processing of the connectivity features. Um, so this is relatively flexible. You can also introduce your own uh, implementation in the pipeline. Um, we have the, you will have the result of the clustering, including a range of validity uh, metrics that will help you to identify the optimal parcellation from a data structure point of view. And you have, uh, relatively extended reports. So um, that was all for this introduction to uh, brain parcellation. I tried to cover more or less um, the literature. So this is not um, a deep uh, introduction, but I tried to give you a, an overview here to help you to find your way in this uh, very wide uh, literature. So brain parcellation in summary is a very wide set of methods to identify brain region and or network. It ranges from histology to MRI based connectivity. It is used to understand and to represent brain organization and data. So to derive maps that you can then use for compressing your data. Uh, there are conversions, but also importantly, diversions between mapping features. And I hope from this talk you have uh, understood the neurobiological relevance of these diversions. And uh, if you look for a, a resource for CBP, uh, I can recommend CBP tool as a user-friendly and flexible pipeline for connectivity-based parcellation. And this is freely available on GitHub. Thank you very much for uh, your attention and I hope that you will really enjoy this educational course about brain parcellation. Thank you.